the television campaign in Western Armenia TV represent the most important news for today, today's broadcast. Parliamentary elections of Western Armenia. Vote for the list of future deputies, sons of Western Armenia, on the issue of Armenians of Western Armenia. The U.S. ambassador met with the youth of Artsakh. Basically important that Baku and Yerevan will talk and reach an agreement. Moscow has never closed the doors of dialogue with Yerevan. After 600 years of destruction, the 15th century handwritten book returned to Armenia. Vote for the list of future deputies of Western Armenia. Legislative elections of 2023. The Electoral Commission of the Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia presents below the official list of candidates for the 2023 legislative elections of the Parliament of Western Armenia. You are invited to participate in the election for future Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia. All you have to do is to fill out the requested form and apply. Confirmation of your choice for, against, or obtain, and duly completed form will be done by clicking on the final button send. You can only check this form, the list for or against or abstain. Any other choice will be invalid. Under these conditions, you support or reject the list of candidates. The voting form will be open from December 8 till December 15, 2023. Aren Hovanisyan, hero who died bravely during 44-day war in 2020, was from Ararat region, studied at Yerevan State College of Culture. Parents planned a colorful future for Aren, and he wanted to enter the Yerevan State Institute of Theater and Cinema. Hovanisyan Aren was drafted into the army on August 12, in 2020, and served in Martaket. During the attack, he becomes a living shield for his five friends with his body. Only he dies from the explosion. Aren's heart stopped from the shockwave. None of his five friends were hurt. Aryan was one of the first victims of 44-day war. His name appeared in the list of the dead on September 28 in 2020. Today he would have turned to 20 years old. The Transcaucasian delegation had not yet left Tiflis when Levon Karahan's telegram was received from Brad Litovsk, which informed about the setting of cars, Batum and Ardahan regions to the tour. The Transcaucasian same discussed the situation and tried to form a unified position. The same did not adopt the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, and Noe Jordan declared that they would rather die with honor than to sign the treaty and be disgraced and cursed for the generation. The Armenian deputies hoped to get the opportunity of self-determination in Western Armenia in negotiation with Turks. At first, the Azerbaijan expressed their support to the Turks secretly, and then their aim Turks, and gradually it became more and more obvious. They are declared that it is necessary to end the war and be satisfied with the borders line in 1914 and not to interfere in the internal affairs of Turks. The head of the same delegation that went to Trabzon, composed of many expert military personnel and translators. From the Armenian side, Ruben Terminasyan, historian Leo and others were present as well, also including a guard of about 15 people. The arrival of the roughly 19% of, of delegation in Trabzon became a laughing stock for Turks. You can read about the historical meeting in Trabzon on the website of Western Armenian TV. On December 15, Ambassador Queen met with the youth of Artsakh to discuss the challenges they face and opportunities for greater integration through civil engagement in Eastern Armenia. This was reported by the U.S. Embassy in Eastern Armenia. The rights of displaced people must be recognized and protected not only on the Day of Human Rights, but almost every day. It is basically important that Baku and Yerevan talk and reach agreements. James O'Brien, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, in an interview with the Voice of America, referred to the negotiation process between Eastern Armenia and Baku. They issued a joint statement showing support for each other in many ways, including their international aspirations. For example, as for Azerbaijan's side, it is to host the next UN climate conference, and he achieved the right to do that. We hope it will be beneficial for both countries to achieve an agreement as well as for Armenia's international aspiration. This kind of support is an important step towards getting a normal bilateral relations. We hope that very soon we will be witness of peace agreement of two parties. Both sides have expressed their interest to a peace achievement. We, as well as our European partners and others, are ready to support. We would like to see the end of all this soon, because the conclusion of peace will bring huge benefits, O'Brien said, and added that U.S. has told the two countries that he is willing to support the conclusion of a peace agreement between them. We have already hosted several rounds of peace talks between the two foreign ministers, and we would do it again if the parties decide that it would help them make peace. We are ready to help, and we encourage both sides to meet, and so far each of them told that they are ready to work towards the agreement of peace, said O'Brien. 
On December 7, it was clear that the staff of Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia and the administration of the President of Azerbaijan issued a joint statement according to which Baku will release 32 servicemen, Yerevan will release two servicemen, and the parties will take steps to build trust. The statement states that the parties agreed that there is a historic opportunity to achieve the long-awaited peace in the region. The two sides, Yerevan and Baku, reaffirmed their intention to settle relations and reach a peace treaty based on the respect for the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Russia have never closed the doors of dialogue and blocked opportunities of contract, especially with such allied states as Armenia. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Galuzin said this in an interview with Sputnik. This is how they answered uh, the question whether a bilateral meeting of the foreign ministers of the two countries is planned in the near future. We're always ready, he added. According to the Deputy Minister, contacts remain in any case. The ministers met for the last time in Skopje within the framework of the OSCE ministerial meeting. Galuzin is convicted that it is necessary to maintain an active dialogue in order to honestly discuss and find ways to solve existing problems together. We are aiming for this. I am confident that we will overcome this period of our relations, said Galuzin. In recent months, experts report on Armenian-Russian relations. Armenia does not participate in CSTO military ex exercises and has refused the quote of the Deputy Secretary General of that organization. All this is sometimes ac accompanied by mutual accusations and diplomatic notes. After about 600 years of destruction, the precious gospel of 15th century returned to Armenia. The ceremony of offering the book to Matena Daran took place on December 14. Director of Matena Daran, Aragaz Malian, considers as a celebration the donation of the manuscript book for both to the Meso Mashtots Research Institute of Ancient Man Manuscript and for Armenologists. According to Aragaz Malian, return of the handwritten book is appreciated because Armenian manuscript possesses a very high value in the international market. Referring to the current activity of Matena Daran, the director said that they are entering a new period of reform. The older our values are, the newer must be the models of management. He stated, our goal is to do everything possible so that Martin Adaram perceived not only as a national symbol, an archetype form in the subconscious of every Armenian, but a living presence, a center of intelligence, respect for knowledge, openness to the world, and mastering all progressive transformations. Khazmalian mentioned that the manuscript was handed over to Martin Adaram by Minister of Education of Science, Culture and Sports of the Republic of Armenia, Jean Andriasian. The event was accompanied by the performances of the State Chamber Chuar Hover.